Um, if it's a four dollar tax, what terms could be shifted? Supply. Supply. Okay. And if the tax is four dollars, I know the difference between the supply curve has to be four dollars. So I could just run my supply curve like that. Okay. Four. What? I mean, does it matter? Yes. Why? Yeah, but long as it runs through here, it's going to be 80, right? The calculation is yes, but for actual. No, I think you're going to do it. No, yeah, you want to see two and two like that, right? Yeah. Okay, so um, do you have the $4 tax would be all you have to have is the new equilibrium down to the old supply curve, so you have a $4 tax. Now, what are the consumers going to pay Andrew after the tax? Eight, right? So consumers are going to pay eight. What do the producers get to keep? Four dollars. Okay. So the producers get four. Now, the easy way for me is you take the new equilibrium down to the supply and across, and that's what the producers get to keep. Or you could say the consumer spends eight. They got to set four dollars in taxes, so they're left with four. Either way, get you the same answer for four dollars. You know that there has to be a four dollar tax, okay? And the difference between the supply curves has to be four. So, like six minus two would be four. Eight minus four would be four. And so. Wait, so why are we taking it from that across in the middle? What do you mean? Well, why are we taking it from that middle to the equilibrium? Well, right here? Yeah. No, 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 it's in the middle. 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 Yeah. Yeah, but what the consumer is paying is this new equilibrium, right? Yeah. Any other questions on that? All right, then weight loss. Okay. So here is your dead weight loss, right? So it's um, height is four, and uh, the base would be 200, which would, um, no, is the base 200? The base is 100, right? The base is 100, 200 minus 100. So four times 100 would be 400, and it's half base times height divided by two would give you 200. Okay. This is typical what they could ask you on an excise test. All right. This was a free response, but um, in multiple choice, they could ask you any of these. What did the consumer, what did the consumer pay up the tax? How much was the tax? Well, they gave you that. How much does the producer keep in the deadweight? Right. Why is it 
Why you divided by two again? Four times one. Half, half times base times height, so area over square inch. That makes sense to you, Luke? Yeah. All right. All right. Just got to get this thing to turn. All right. Um, Oh, okay. So let me go back. All right. Um, heat up to do do preface. Uh, Dear God, do bless us as we prepare for exams to get our work done as we prepare, but also to be stress free and not overloaded. Do bless us going into this new year to make some great choices and have lots of great opportunities. Thank you. All right, to the finals Tuesday will be 60 multiple choice. It will be very similar to the packet of 60 multiple choice I gave you to practice. All right, there'll be three FRQs. You have to do all three of them. One of the big, the FRQs, the first one is worth 15 points, the second one 7.5, the third one 7.5. It's almost always on a monopoly, natural monopoly, or perfect competition. Um, I'm going to go over, especially the monopoly and perfect competition today, trying to go through all the things I have seen them ask. Okay, so you could get past. I would really encourage you to use the ultimate review guide if you rather. I did put a study guide for micro there. All the graphs are on a PowerPoint. And I would take the practice test. Okay. I if virtual tomorrow, which I think we will be, check your email because Zoom is like sent me a notification that I might have to change links. So just check your email for a new link. Okay. All right, and just put all cameras on. I'm not checking are you ensure to tie. Did they even say anything about that today? All right, so let's just assume you can dress the way you want. Um, I, I'm not checking you. It's just easier for me to see you and communicate with you. All right. I will also, Monday night, I will do a review for Tuesday's final at 7.30 at night. And then I'll be here Tuesday morning at 7.45 to answer any questions. All right. So um, this review will probably go from like 7.30 to 8.00. And then I'll be here from 7.45. I, I don't think I do anything. So I'll just be around all morning to the, to the test. I don't know, do you guys, have, everyone have tests before? Any kind of test that'll happen? So that's it. Any questions on the test or anything about that? How long is it, 90 minutes? No, two hours. Two hours? 70 minutes. Did I put that down? It's 70 minutes for the multiple choice and then 50 minutes for the FLC. Okay. What? Before it? Okay. All right. All right. So I'm going to start. Um, what I want to do is review like the perfect competition monopoly. Um, one of the things in it is the force. And I just put this, I put this in your notes, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Just to quickly go over total revenue, price times quantity. Remember, uh, accounting profit is total revenue minus explicit cost. What's an explicit cost? Something I actually pay money for, like labor, like um, food, um, any cost that you're paying for. That's accounting profit. We don't really use accounting profit. We use economic profit, which is total revenue minus explicit and implicit. What's an implicit cost? More of an opportunity cost. What could I be making 
if I was an teacher. So if I was a lawyer, I was making two hundred thousand. As a teacher, I'm making fifty. So my explicit cost would be one hundred fifty thousand. Do I actually pay that? No, but it's a cost, right? So that's it. And then normal profit. I saw they use this a lot on the AP exam, and I don't, which is my fault. All that means is zero economic profit. The same thing, normal profit, zero economic profit. Okay. Average total cost equal average variable plus average fixed. Short run, but remember, the short run is one fixed for each order. Okay. And in the long run, there is no fixed for each order. All right, so here, let me do a little erasing to make that look a little neater. All right, there, here is the long run average total cost. Remember, it's the long run, no fixed resources. You have economies of scale. What's economies of scale? As quantity increases, average, average total cost decreases. Usually, like, like you could buy, I remember when, when I was in town, we went from 400 stores to 2,000 stores. The biggest thing is, A, we could buy in bulk, so we got discount prices, and all of a sudden our cost came down. After a while, it doesn't matter if you're buying like 100,000 boxes or 200,000 boxes, your cost then constant. So constant cost is quantity increases, costs are the same. Then you get discounting to scale. And like the company gets big, there's a lot of replication, there might be set, and all of a sudden, as quantity increases, average total cost increases. All right? Yes, sir. So I kind of just scale, you said that as quantity increases, average total cost decreases. Correct. And the average of the two Correct. All right. Yes, sir. All right, quick multiple. Is it a multiple choice? The average total cost of precision two units of output. No, it's not a multiple choice. We just got to figure it out. If you like a minute, average total cost of producing two units of output. Can I put that in your notes? Make it easier for you to say. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I, I, I wrote my agent. Yeah. 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 We've got this one. Ninety-five, right? The average total cost equal average fixed fifty plus average variable forty-five ninety-five. Marginal cost just there into this bracket. Now, here's something that I just want to show you. If you add the marginal cost up and divide by the unit, you'll get the variable cost. So, like fifty-five plus eighty-five is ninety. Divided by two gives you the average variable for So if they ever did that, so um, this is 90 plus 60 is 150 divided by three would give you 50. Okay, just in case they gave you that type of question, I wanted to show that to you. So you have to add, say we want time, you have to add all the marginal costs up. And then divide by the unit. Now, if they ask you what is the total variable for it, you just say them all. Okay. All right. Give you a minute on this. At 100 units of output, a firm's total cost is 10,000. If the firm's total fixed cost is 4,000, its average variable cost is equal to.
A is an alpha. B as in broccoli. C as in caroline. Dogwood. Ellen. They're both wrong, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. If the firm's total cost is 10,000 and its fixed cost is 4,000, its variable cost will be 6,000, right? But total cost equals fixed cost plus variable. All right. So I got 6,000. Um, there was 100 units. If I divide it by 100, it's the average variable cost is going to be 6,000. Any questions on that? All right, let's get into the good stuff. Let's draw a side by side graph losing money. Side by side in perfect competition losing money. Just a minute to do that. Perfect competition side by side. You're struggling to remember this. A lot of it says you really knew it, but there's a real good chance it's the sun in your face. All right, so there it is. They it just supply and demand, price quantity. Um, I was talking to some guy who came in and tracked this this morning. This gets you a point. The market or the industry growth. That gets you a point. Drawing your line over and going this to dark, that's point two. Doing your MC right here, quantity, that's point three. And then putting your ATC above the price is point four. That three responses worth 10 points. You get four points. In my opinion, so like pretty much just, you know, I don't know. I don't want to say doing nothing, but just knowing the gray. Uh, any questions on how this is going? Yes, sir. No, I, I put the ABC there because I want to review shutdown rule and make it. Okay. If they want the ABC, or if they say, like if they would have said, then draw um, a side by side graph losing money that's staying in business or shutting down. All right, so damn while well I have you, the shutdown rule would be what? Yeah, if price is below ABC or ABC is above. All right, and the reason for it is what is between the ABC and the ATC? What is this area? AFC. So right now, I'm paying some of my fixed points. So it's worth staying in business. But if I was below that, I wouldn't be paying any fixed cost. So you never ever shown fixed cost is between ATC and MR? No, ABC. ATC and ABC. It's average variable cost, and then the spike is average fixed cost, and that equals the white one or the wall of the wall. Yes, no, but this is this is fixed cost. This is variable cost, and together they equal uh, Okay. All right. 
Exit rule, anyone? When's the exit? Yeah, if ATC is above price, you exit in the warm one. Okay. And any questions on short run warm one? You shut down the short run. Yeah. Okay. I will give you like 30 seconds or something. Can you shade in the total cost and shade in total revenue? Right, that's all to do now. Can you shade in or make a box of total cost and make a box of total revenue? The fixed cost is any any blank between the agents and the agents. So what's what is so the, you what see is the line? fixed cost is any less than what? Yeah. What is the line? So this? Yeah. That's the loss box. Oh. All right. If I was shaving in, and I kind of did, the average total cost. It is the red line. So it's like the line on top of the loss part all the way down to the axis, across, and up. That's total cost. Total revenue is the price across to the um, profit maximizer down to the quantity. Okay. Any questions on either one of those? Wait, cost is blue. Huh? Wait, cost is blue or red is red? Cost is red. Okay. Okay. Why well, could you tell me either where productively or allocatively efficient is? Yeah, where MC crosses ATC. Because productively efficient leads for. It's going through the ATC. Okay. Lorenzo, allocative efficiency. You want some help? I have a question. What does the blue box represent? Oh, that is for Lorenzo. Cameron, you want to give Lorenzo some help on allocative? Where MC crosses demand. Where MC crosses demand is allocative efficiency. Okay. MC equals M R right here. So allocated, no. Allocatedly efficient and profit maximizing at the same point. And this correct. Okay. Yeah. And that's why perfect competition is allocatedly efficient. Oh. Allocatedly efficient. Correct. Okay. All right. Is the price of the firm greater? Equal or the same as the industry? Is the price of the firm greater, equal, or the same as the industry? John? And John, if they same is correct, if they ask you to explain, how would you explain that? Right. Firms are price taker, right? And all you have to do is there's the industry price, there's the firm, they're the same. Firms are price taker. Any question on this slide? Where's allocated the efficiency? MC process to me. What does that exactly mean? That's what society wants. That's producing what the people want. 
Any other questions? All right. Oh. Yeah. You said burn the price maker, right? Yeah. All right. Justin, do you remember where the supply curve is in the firm? Uh, yes, it's the MC above the book's price or it's above uh, it's about 86. It's the MC above 86, right? Because what happens if we're below 86? We shut down, so we don't supply anything, okay? So it's the, it's, Supply is the curve above the ABC. Peter, is this example, are we in the short or long run? How do you know that? We're losing money. If we're losing money, Peter, a firm's going to enter or exit. All right. If firms exit, how am I going to show that graphically? The firms are going to exit. I'm going to look to get back to zero economic profit, right? And as Peter said, my supply curve is going to go left. Okay. Peter, now I'm at short and long run. I'm at the long run. Okay. Any? Go. So, how do you know when you're in the short versus the long run? Anytime you're making or losing money, you're in the short run. Okay. So, if they Band, which they do a lot, they give you a comp, do it side by side in the long run, no profit. Okay. okay? You make you losing money in the long run. Make you losing money in the short run. Okay? Monopolies and oligopolies are the only ones who can make money in the long run. All right, so here we are. All right, I don't. What is that other? All right. Just to get this in the for a second. Here we are. All right. Wait. I think I'll just score it. It'll be easy. Okay. All right, at zero economic profit, supply, demand, What question did I ask at zero and normal profit? Is there anything? Oh, okay. All right. So there it is. And that could be considered normal with zero economic profit. All right. If there is an excise tax, could someone tell me what would happen? Huh? MC would shift left. Okay. So I'm shifting MC left like that, right? Yeah, and then ATC. Well, hold on. I have a new quantity, right? Yeah. And then what, what did you say? And then ATC out to the lowest point is at the MC. Something like that? Yes. Okay. Now. So hit the other MC. You do the, little, the lowest point on the previous MC. Yeah. No, I do MC where it crosses the main. Yeah. That's the new problem now. We're talking about how the, the lowest point. Oh, oh, the, oh then I drew it crappy. Like that, you mean? Mm -hmm. Okay. You're right. All right. Now, am I in the short or long run now? You're in the long run. Okay. I'm in the short run. I'm in the short run because I'm going to be money, right? Yeah. Okay. Hit price change. Yes. Uh, wait, did price change? No. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure. It's it, right? But quantity change, right? Okay. All right. Go so zero economic profit because the MC product to ATV. Yeah, where they all meet like this. They there is zero economic profit. Right there. Okay. Okay. You 
good. All right. Now, last question on perfect competition. If this firm raises prices, what's going to happen to total revenue? Yeah. Even go even more drastic. Take it one more step from down. Yeah. Zero. The reason is if thousands of firms are selling something for ten dollars, no one's going to pay twelve. Okay. All right. Any questions on what we did with perfect competition? And that's basically almost everything I've seen them ask about perfect competition. All right. I'm going to try to spend the rest. All right, let me give you a minute. Draw a monopoly making money. Show me the profit box and dead weight loss. All right, I'm going to put the monopoly graph up, I think. Yeah, like that. All right, so um, you have M equals M R, if it's a monopoly up to demand. Down is your quantity. Your dead weight loss um, is from here. Okay. Um, you take it down, down to the MC curve, and there is your dead weight loss. All right. So for the price, you know, um, down to the MC, up to demand. Then like what? Anything else for you? Oh, allocatively efficient. Who's going to give me allocatively efficient? Go, Cameron. MC crosses demand. MC crosses demand. Allocatively efficient. Tony, do you remember where productively efficient is? Yeah, we're in uh, NPC plus MC. All right. So we got productively efficient there. Can I ask for anything else in this one? Highest total revenue. Who can give me highest total revenue? Where do I find the sign? Right. So if I take that up to demand, besides this being highest total revenue, what else do we call it? Unit elastic. Unit elastic. Okay. Everything to the left is um, elastic. All right. And Everything to the right of it would be analytical. All right, any questions on that so far? So, John, uh, deadly loss goes from the, uh, demand down to the bottom of the MC. To the, yeah, and then it takes the MC curve up to the demand. Okay. 
Huh? All, right. All right. So I'm going to just do this for time's sake. I'm going to show you the total revenue box. You just draw the price line across down to the quantity. There is your total revenue box. Okay. But it's in blue. In red, it's going to be a total cost. So I'm going to take my profit maximizer line to the ATC, go across. Sorry, this one could be a little bit better. So this would be total cost on the bottom. And both of them are total. The blue is total revenue. How do you make the box so it's from? I take the price to the um, quantity line and down. That gets me total revenue. How do you start with price like that? The price. Here's your profit maximizer and equals MR of the demand. Okay. So I didn't even see the online of the price. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. It, it, it's getting confused. Does anyone know if this monopoly was starting to operate in a, like a perfectly competitive firm, where would price and quantity be? Yeah. Where MC equals demand. Why? Because it's perfect competition. The industry is like supply and demand. MC supply, there's demand. So notice perfect competition charges less produces more. And last, yes, sir. What is the box of total cost? Is that profit? That would be computer circle. Oh, I'm just talking about the one right below that. This? The one right above that. This? Yeah. This whole box in blue is total revenue. Oh, yeah, that, that would be profit. Wait, so how do you distinguish between cost and profit when you have a line like this? All right. All right, guys, we'll finish up tomorrow. Have a good day. Please come up here. Now. Okay, have a good day.